Hey everyone, Victor is here and welcome back to Synthesis Sunday, where we work through various organic synthesis to help you improve your synthetic skills. In this video, I want to look at this transformation where we start with the one pentene species and we are going to convert that into one 4-heptane diol. If you want to work through this synthesis first independently, make sure you pause this video now because I am about to start my preliminary analysis. So, the first thing that jumps at me here is that we have different number of carbons in the starting material and in our products. I have one two, three, four, and five carbons in my starting material, while in the final product I have seven carbons. This means that we are looking at making a new carbon-carbon bond right over here in our structure. Now, another thing that I'm noticing about this molecular moiety over here is that I have a two-carbon chunk with a functional group and alcohol in this case, this alcohol right over here, so this alcohol is sitting on the second carbon or two carbons away from the connection point, if you like. Typically, that is going to be a hallmark of an epoxide reaction, or rather I should say an epoxide opening, which means that our potential predecessors in this case could look like something like this. However, the starting material where we have the greener reagent and an alcohol functional group at the same time in the same molecule is, well, obviously not gonna cut it, as those pieces are just simply not compatible with each other. So, the obvious solution to this problem is going to be some sort of a protection for the alcohol, meaning that most likely we're going to be seeing uh, that our molecule has um, the TMS protecting group or maybe some other protecting protection sitting over there on the oxygen, so it's no longer an alcohol but an oxygen with the protecting group sitting on it. But this now adds a couple of additional steps to our synthesis, we need to put the protecting group on, then we'll have to take it off at some point, so it looks like this line of our retrosynthetic analysis is uh, leading us towards a long, windy and problematic pathway. Which is never a good idea, since we always want our synthesis to be uh, as straight straightforward as possible, concise and efficient. Well, if this synthetic pathway doesn't really take us anywhere productive, how about we look at the synthesis from a slightly different perspective? We're still going to be making the same carbon-carbon bond, but now the other side of our molecule is going to be the epoxide, so we can build it like this, and at this point it is going to be blatantly obvious how we can get that epoxide from our starting material. So, so the attempt number two in our retrosynthetic analysis actually gives us a very quick and efficient pathway from our starting material all the way to our product. So to put it all together, I'm first going to start by redrawing my starting material, I will then treat it with MCPBA making the corresponding epoxide. Then I'm going to do the reaction with my Grignard reagent, uh, which in this case is of course going to be the um, uh, vinyl magnesium bromide, which after the uh, acidic workup at the end going to give me my alcohol and the new carbon-carbon bond that I have just created is right over here, so I'm going to show that as a new bond and that is precisely where we wanted that new bond to be. Then, the only thing that is left for me is to do the hydroboration oxidation and I'm going to get my target molecule. Done and done. And if you are wondering why I didn't go uh, with a better way from the very beginning, well, that is on purpose. I wanted to show you how your initial gut feeling might be leading you to a wrong direction when it comes to retrosynthesis. Retrosynthesis is as much of an art as it is a science, so don't be scared to go back and explore the alternative approaches when you feel like your analysis is taking you nowhere or maybe your analysis is taking you towards the um, potential pathway that will take you a lot of steps. Typically, within the scope of the sophomore organic chemistry, we are not going to be looking at synthesis that are longer than maybe three to five transformations. If you have more steps than that, probably you're doing something wrong. But the only way how you can learn to uh, brainstorm and improvise and think about different uh, approaches is by 
making mistakes and, well, embracing this challenge. Now, since you guys keep asking me to go over something a little bit more difficult in my synthesis problems, well, next time I'm going to look at this transformation over here. Can you figure out how to accomplish this synthesis? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more. Check out this video next and I will see you next time.